All right, so hey guys, it's me, 80s from before. Today, guys, I'm going to give you guys my opinion on the latest transfers, guys. The latest transfers. There's been a lot of transfers going on, guys. It's hard to keep track of every single one. So I'm going to be giving you guys my top three transfers from the last week and give you guys my thoughts. Now, I know some people will say this isn't technically a transfer, which technically isn't. It's just a loan thing. Um, however, this is still pretty significant, I would say, and that that's the reason why it's still in my top three. Let's talk about Romelu Lukaku. Romelu Lukaku is back in Inter Milan, guys. This is where he began. This is where he did ex extremely well under Antonio Conte's system in the 3-5-2. And you could see how good he was at Inter Milan. His partnership with uh, Latar Martinez was excellent. And even though Inter have moved on since then, they I don't think they've really properly replaced uh, Latar uh, um, Lukaku because as good as Jekyll is, I feel like Jekyll wasn't really only good for the first half of the season. The second half, he kind of fell off. And he also, um, you know, there's a new manager there, obviously, Inzaghi as well. And it's going to be interesting to see how Lukaku does back at Inter Milan now, because obviously the Inter fans must be really, really kind of confused and stubborn. And obviously his time at Chelsea has been a complete, complete disaster in itself. And, you know, back at his old team, back at Inter Milan, who knows, maybe he could repeat the works again, you know, maybe try to win another Scudetto with Inter Milan, you know. And so... Like I said, congratulations for Inter to get him back. And let's see what he can do, guys. Let's see what he can do. Because like I said, man, him back to Inter Milan, where he really uh, became the striker that he used to be, is very, very good. Now let's talk about the next player we have. It is Gabriel Jesus. Gabriel Jesus, man, he's, he's moving to Arsenal now. And I actually made this signing on my Twitch career mode. You guys can find that link in the description below. And I've been doing Arsenal career mode. And I got to say, he's been really, really good. Um, the thing about Gabriel Jesus, though, people need to understand, he isn't a traditional number nine. He is a right winger. He's not really a striker. Um, he can play as a striker. That's just not his best position. And it's going to be interesting to see how he does at Arsenal because, like I said, guys, Arsenal sold Lacazette. They got Eddie Nketea, and who that guy is just average, in my opinion. He's not very good. I'm probably butchering his name. If I am, please let me know in the comment section below. I'm just going to call him Eddie just to, for the purposes of this video. You know, and with his salary being like on 100k per week, it's not really that great, in my opinion. And for Gabriel Jesus, man, he can really, really fire Arsenal to put them into that back of the position because this is a very good sign. This is a very, very good signing. This is a pep type of player. I and mean, obviously, you know, the two know each other, Arteta and Gabriel Jesus, when they're both at Manchester City, respectively. And I just play for me, Gabriel Jesus, that type of player that he can score those clutch goals because Gabriel Jesus isn't a type of player that will score like a 20 to 25 goals. But he can always give you that clutch goal in there. Like, I don't really feel like he's that consistent number nine. But I can feel, I feel as though that he can come in clutch. I mean, look at the goals he scored for Manchester City. That's important goals. He scored the winning goal for Manchester City to win the EPL's 2017, 2018 season. He scored the winning goal against Real Madrid in the Champions League. He scored against Real Madrid this last season in the Champions League. And so he knows how to score big goals, guys. He's just that kind of player in that... He always knows when to come up clutch. And that's why I've always said that if you compare him to Aguero, obviously Aguero is a way better player. But in terms of clutch ability, he is that clutch player. And if he can do that kind of thing for Arsenal, you have a really young team there. You know, you got Odegaard there, Bukayo Saka there, and then Emil Smith-Rowe, Gabriel Martinelli. It's looking really good. And they might even get Rafinha. They might get Rafinha, guys. Although we don't know who's what's going to happen to Rafinha. I think it's going to be between Chelsea or Barcelona for Rafinha. I don't think Arsenal will be in the... I don't think Arsenal is no longer in contention. Regardless, though, it is still a very, very good signing. And then, obviously, you also got Fabio Vieira. They signed as well. Arsenal looking good, guys. Arsenal are really looking serious, and they have to. And I mean have to. They have to They have to get top four next season. They need to challenge their top four. And if they don't get top four, it, it might be over for them. It might be. Um, then, yeah. Let's talk about another signing we got. It is Paul Pogba, guys. Paul Pogba, guys. He's back to Juventus, guys, where he began. And I just play for me, Pogba is just one of those players. He's just a very good player, guys. And we know in his time at Manchester United has been kind of a disappointment. You know, he's just not really been that amazing at there. And he needs a big move, you know. And I feel like for me, this is always the right place for him to go to. Even though you could maybe make the argument that maybe he, uh, this is more of an emotional move rather than a top, um, a, um, what's the word calling again, a uh, top move. But regardless, though, it is still a very, very um, good option indeed. And I just believe it's though that this is a great option. Let's see what Juve can do. Because one of the things that Juventus have been struggling with is the midfield. The midfield's just not been the same, guys. The midfield's just not been the same. 
And I just think as though that if they are really serious and wanting to compete for the titles and everything like that, they need to do something like that. So let me go ahead and put this image right here. We're gonna have, we're gonna talk about him later. But um, yeah, as I said, guys, I just think that for me, Pogba, man, back at Juventus. And Juventus, like I said, guys, let's see what they can do because they're gonna be rebuilding next season. You know, obviously no Diabella there. You know, there is no um who's the player, I forgot his name, no Chiellini there, no um Ronaldo there. They're gonna have to rebuild. And Juventus are definitely on the rebuild. Let's see what Allegri can do with Pogba back at Juventus. Because you look at the players that Juve have in the midfield, you got Rabiot, who's average, Benza, Cor is average, Arthur's average. You got um um you know McKenny. McKenny's good. I think McKenny is good. Um, however, I don't think he alone is going to be enough. And you can see that partnership between McKinney and Pogba in that team. So let's see what Pogba can do at Juventus, man. And then finally, the final transfer that we have just confirmed earlier today on Thursday, uh, June 30th. And that is Richarlison, guys. Richarlison is going to top them Hotspur, guys. Top them, man. They're really serious about making top four. They really are serious. Antonio Conte has done an excellent job with this team. And he's now getting the pieces that he wants. You know, it's, it's actually interesting to see how Daniel Levy is actually backing um, um, Antonio Conte here. And he's getting all the players he wants. And so for Spurs, man, Spurs have been making excellent signings. You know, obviously they got, um, you know, um, was it Basuma, Parisage. You know, they now got Richarlison. And they're potentially likely to get Longley. Although I don't think Longley will be that good. Who knows? Maybe Conte can revitalize his career here at Tottenham Hotspur on a two-year loan deal. And it'll be interesting to see what Richarlison could do because he definitely is a good player, guys. I think he's been very, very criminally. Uh, I think people have been, I think he's been overhated by fans. I think he's definitely a good, solid player. Now, is he amazing or world class? I'll probably not give those kind of things, but he is definitely a good, solid player. You see what he's done for Everton. You know, it was crucial for Everton to survive the Premier League. And I just think that for me, he's a good squad player to have. Obviously, I don't think he's a starter. Um, however, I do think he could be a good squad depth option, you know, play on the left wing and even play on the right wing as well. And who knows, can he maybe even play um, striker as well, you know, Harry Kane replacement because they don't really, uh, Tottenham don't really have a replacement for Harry Kane in mind. So he can play as a left wing, can play as a striker as well. And I just feel like for me, he's a good player, guys. He's a good player to have on your team for squad depth. And as I said, guys, Tottenham are looking solid because like I said, guys, to get top four, you need to have a lot of squad depth and a lot of quality as well. So those are my thoughts on the signings that have been made and this week, the big signings that is. And I want you guys to comment down below what signings have been really, really impressive to you guys. Because for me, these four signings have been incredible, guys. These four signings have been incredible. And yeah, man, that's going to be it for today. So hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. Comment down below with thoughts in the comments section below. Subscribe if you're not like this video if you enjoy. Make sure you guys check out me my apologies. Let's go to below. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.